this tree that I'm standing in front of is a walnut tree. I didn't know walnut trees were planted in Utah where I live until a few weeks ago when I found this tree, but they do survive here apparently. Um, in this video, I'm just going to teach you how to distinguish walnut trees from other types of trees and also how to identify a couple of different species of walnuts. Walnut trees have alternate leaves, so the leaves will be coming out not from the same point on the branch, but from different points. Walnuts have pinnately compound leaves, as opposed to palmately compound leaves. So the leaf is the entire stalk, and it has many leaflets. The trees that people most often confuse with walnut trees are hickory trees, which are in the same family, but a different genus. And one way you can tell the difference is that walnut leaflets are bigger in the middle of the leaf, um, and in hickories, the leaflets towards the end of the leaf are often bigger. One thing that distinguishes walnut trees from other similar trees like hickories is that the inside of the twig, which is called the pith, is divided up into chambers in walnuts. So this twig is really dry, but you can kind of see that there are sections or chambers that would divide up the pith. So if you have a pocket knife or something, you can check the tree that you're looking at and see if it's a walnut. So one thing to know about walnut trees is that the leaves have a distinctive smell if you crush them up. So I have a leaf right here that I'm crushing. People say the smell is like spiced citrus. Um, I'm not sure if that's how I'd describe it, but it's a good smell. So if you see a walnut tree, you should crush up the leaf and smell it. So this is what walnuts look like when they're just on the tree. Um, the actual walnut that you would eat is inside a shell, which is inside that green husk. So a couple of words you need to know. The husk is the green outer part that we can see right now. And then inside that there's a shell, and then inside the shell is the walnut. This is a black walnut tree, or Juglans nigra, which is founded in a park, and I think it is a really beautiful tree. One way to tell the difference between the English walnut and the black walnut is to count the leaflets. So on the black walnut, the number of leaflets can be quite large. It can be 15 to 23 leaflets. Um, but on the English walnut, you're usually only going to have between five and nine leaflets. So you can see here what these shells of black walnuts look like. And you can see that either some humans or some animals have opened a bunch of these. Um, the shell is rough and it's got some furrows. Uh, when you open the husk, there's a black substance in it that can kind of stain your hands. So you have to be careful if you open these. Uh, black walnuts are not the type of walnuts that you would find in the store and they apparently have a stronger, earthier taste than normal English walnuts, but you can eat them. Black walnuts are something that we call allelopathic, meaning that they release a toxin into the soil around them that prevents other plants from growing. And that toxin is, toxin is called juglone. Um, other walnuts release it, but in smaller amounts. So the most toxic walnut is the black walnut. Now some plants are fine and can tolerate it, but some plants like tomato plants and potatoes and certain pine trees uh, do not do well right next to a walnut tree. In the Harry Potter series, the wand of Bellatrix Lestrange is actually made of walnut wood, which I think is really appropriate given what we know about its allelopathic uh, abilities. This is a little technical, but I think it's actually possible that this walnut that we're looking at is a hybrid between the eastern black walnut, which is Juglans nigra, which usually has really rough shells, and another black walnut called the northern California black walnut, which is a smaller tree and has smoother shells. Um, this tree has medium smoothness shells, and it's a kind of a medium-sized tree, which makes me think it's maybe the royal walnut, which is a hybrid or kind of a mix between those two black walnuts. 
This is an English walnut tree, or Juglans regia. So I found a map created by the city of Orem, or the forester of Orem, that lists all of the trees that the city of Orem takes care of, including this one English walnut tree. In all of Orem, there's just one English walnut tree, and whoever made that map is awesome because they helped me find it. The English walnut tree is where we get walnuts that are actually sold in stores. You can see that the leaves of the English walnut are not serrated. They don't have toothed edges. But they're still compound leaves, just like in other walnuts. You can see here that the English walnut has less leaflets on its leaf. Um, these ones only have like seven or eight leaflets. I just want to mention one other type of walnut tree that you can find if you live back east. I don't know that there are any here in Utah. If there are, I would love to know about it. It's called the butternut, and the walnut from the butternut is apparently very buttery, um, but it's a lot more rare than the other walnuts. But if you see a butternut, you can tell that it's a butternut by the shape of the husks. They're more oblong and they have ridges. Another thing to know about walnut trees is that they are very prized for their wood. The wood is very beautiful. It's used in making furniture. I think the wind just picked up because I'm talking about Bellatrix Lestrange. I didn't know people planted walnut trees in Utah where I live until just a few weeks ago when I found this 